Myeloma patients often have reduced production of red cells, white cells and platelets due to the proliferation of the cancer cells within the bone marrow. This results in enormous anemia, leukopenia or low white cell count and thrombocytopenia. Anemia is the most common finding, but importantly it's unusual to find myeloma cells in the peripheral blood. At diagnosis around 60 to 70% of patients with myeloma have a normocytic, normochromic anemia. Importantly in the blood film, patients with myeloma may have rouleau formation that we can see uh, here on the film. Rouleau formation are clumps of red cells that appear like stacked plates on a blood film. This can give us a clue that there is a high concentration of plasma protein in the blood. Other conditions, apart from myeloma that can cause rouleau, include infections and inflammatory disorders. In myeloma patients, they can present with renal problems. The creatinine can be high, the EGFR reduced due to kidney disease, and this is caused by light chain proteins damaging the tubules within the kidneys. Blood urea nitrogen and uric acid levels may also be raised in myeloma patients. The myeloma cancerous cells, the plasma cells, lead to the production of a monoclonal paraprotein circulating in the blood, and this in turn increases the whole blood and plasma viscosity. The circulating paraprotein causes the red cells to clump together, and this in turn leads to them falling more rapidly when the sample is left to stand, resulting in a raised ESR. However, in patients, importantly, with an unexplained, abnormally high ESR, myeloma should be considered as a possible cause. CRP is less helpful for ruling myeloma in or out, although it is often elevated in later stages of the disease. One of the other features we can find in the blood test of myeloma patients is a raised serum calcium. The cause of this is multifactorial, but it usually results from bone reabsorption due to the plasma cells infiltrating the bone marrow. The calcium can also be raised because of renal impairment, resulting in a reduction in the clearing of calcium by the kidneys. Hypercalcemia tends to be more pronounced in patients with advanced disease. Liver function tests can be abnormal. It is unusual in myeloma, but they can be raised due to blockage of the liver or bile ducts and a bilirubin may also be raised, which can present as jaundice. A key feature, however, from the biochemistry that might suggest multiple myeloma is the finding of a very large gap between the total protein, which will be raised, and the albumin, which will be low or at the lower end of the normal range. Patients with myeloma often can have a low albumin level. This occurs because one of the major growth factors and survival factors for myeloma cells is interleukin-6, IL-6, which blocks the production of albumin. Therefore, low albumin levels suggest more aggressive multiple myeloma and is an important prognostic marker in myeloma. It is important to note, however, that a single blood test should not be used to rule in or rule out multiple myeloma. None of the tests are accurate enough to rule out myeloma on their own. However, when you interpret all of the tests together, they can give a good indication as to whether a patient is likely to have myeloma or not. I think the key message is to refer patients to haematology if the test results for serum and urine protein are abnormal, and particularly if that's supported by abnormal blood tests and blood chemistry, and symptoms such as bone pain, unexplained fractures, generalized weakness, fatigue, and or recurrent infections. Crucially, a bone marrow biopsy is the only way that we can confirm a diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Importantly, the tests that we also use are serum protein electrophoresis and Bench-Jones protein urine tests. Serum electrophoresis can be used to quantify the level of paraprotein in the blood, and in most patients with myeloma, serum protein electrophoresis will report high concentrations of an abnormal gamma globulin usually over 30 grams, and there will be a narrow band or a spike in the gamma zone, a so-called M spike, as we see here, which confirms the presence of a paraprotein. 
Patients with myeloma may also have a Bench-Jones protein detected on urine protein electrophoresis. Bench-Jones proteins are monoclonal, free light chains produced by the myeloma cells and these are excreted into the urine. Urine protein electrophoresis will also show a spike in the gamma zone if Bench-Jones protein is present, very similar to serum protein electrophoresis. The laboratory, when they see these abnormal results, will usually carry out serum immunofixation if a paraprotein or monoclonal free light chain is detected. Serum immunofixation is used to confirm the specific immunoglobulin type of the paraprotein. The most common types in myeloma is IgG, followed by IgA. IgM, IgD and IgE myelomas are rare but they generally have a poorer prognosis. An early identification of a specific immunoglobulin type in myeloma patients can help direct future investigations. Normal serum immunoglobulins are typically reduced. This is called immunoparesis. Serum immunofixation can also help us determine if the free light chains are kappa or lambda. The serum-free light chain assay is another important test we use in multiple myeloma to detect light chains in the blood. These can be used to calculate the kappa lambda free light chain ratio, which is the proportion of kappa light chains in the blood to lambda light chains in the blood. And in healthy individuals with normal kidney function, the amount of light chains in the blood is low, between about 3 and 19 milligrams for kappa free light chains and between about 5 and 26 for lambda-free light chains, and the ratio between kappa and lambda in the blood is usually somewhere between 0.26 and 1.65. In myeloma patients, however, there is usually an increase in the amount of kappa or lambda-free light chains in the blood. If there's an excess of kappa light chains, it may be over 100, and if there's an excess of lambda light chains, it may be less than 0.01. Patients with high levels of both kappa and lambda free light chains, i.e. high levels of both that are well matched, are unlikely to have myeloma. A serum free light chain assay is particularly useful as it can help us diagnose oligosecretory myeloma, a non-secretory form of the disease that produces little or no paraprotein. NICE recommends that we do not use serum protein electrophoresis, serum immunofixation, serum-free light chain assay or a urine electrophoresis alone to exclude a diagnosis of myeloma. We need to use all of these tests together. And as we've seen, in addition to myeloma-specific tests, patients with myeloma will often have related blood test abnormalities. Importantly, if a paraprotein or abnormal light chain result is detected, there can be several explanations. Your local haematology or immunology lab will usually have guidelines to help interpretation, but also please contact the haematology department. They will be more than happy to help you with interpretation of results. Monoclonal gampopathy of uncertain significance, MGUS, is common. It occurs in around 5% of those over the age of 70. In MGUS, the paraprotein level is usually low and there'll be no evidence of anemia or hypercalcemia renal disease or bone disease. Myeloma is usually associated with high gamma globin levels, usually over 30 grams per litre, with very abnormal light chain results, and often with evidence of anemia, renal impairment, raised calcium or bone disease. Importantly, once a paraprotein is detected, your local haematology team will usually be more than happy to help with interpretation of results.